that's just kind of me. Like I wasn't going for consistency. I was going for streaks. But if I want to go for consistency, I have to learn how to manage my my, my mental state between runs. I'm good now. Uh, max of uh, snipe or max HP for curse or choose a card. So choose a card or snipe. So if the snipe is there, I'll take it. The snipe isn't there. Because when I win, I'm super happy, so I can I can get streaky. But if I lose in terms of consistency, I just like eh, I just want to I want to tilt out the spire. So we'll take a card. But now the question is, what's the path? Say if I right doesn't work. I mean, you could just get free fights, but then you have to do a shot. It's not. It doesn't work. We have three elites. Let's do it. Three. It's a lot of hallways, but. We have a pommel strike. I'm ready. I'll do this. I like it. I like it a lot. What do you guys think? I'm gonna do this. Gorgeous. I think we're gonna be good with all these hallways. Blood for Blood versus Evolve. Any Blood for Blooders? I'm a big fan of Blood for Blood. Oh my, it's a meat. It's a fucking meat. All right, boys, strap on in. It's gonna be a big, big, beautiful run, this one. Big, beautiful run, this one. Got a full block, I guess. Got the cleave, got the armaments as well. Well, shit, I'll be damned. Got the uppercut. Alrighty, boys, looking like a three elite. Barn burner is what it is. It's a damn barn burner. It's gorgeous. It's incredible how strong this is, actually. You got the scene red, the ghost armor, the iron wave. I like the ghost armor for block. It's pretty good, but scene red, I'm a sucker for. I already have a palmer strike. We get one upgrade on the palmer strike. Maybe upgrade the uppercut first. All of a sudden, I'm just, I just love scene red. Have I said that already? It's pretty clear that I like scene red. But ghost armor is not bad. Lagavulin. So ghost armor is good for Lagavulin. Ghost armor is also really good for triple sentry. So, Ghost Armor is good for two elites we're, might, we're probably going to fight. Scene Red is just good for the soul, first and foremost, but it's good for everything else. Palmer Strike Plus in the future. Relics that give me card roll. Boss Relics that don't give me energy. Exhumes. Plus the fact that I have an Uppercut and a Bash, which are expensive, and sometimes Blood for Blood is expensive as well. Scene Red can help me play that. You must nourish. But what if we just take Ghostly and nourish that? It's pretty good. For two fights we're about to have. But at the same time, why take damage? I mean, why block when you can just take damage for your meats and do scene red to do damage? Uh, I'll make a choice now, boys. Let me enter the think tank. All right, let's go. Uppercut time. All right, Gremlin Lab, what do you got for me? It's not the Gremlin. Hmm. Oh, let's finish off with the Bash. <laughs> About that. About that run. Uh, would you guys use Elixir on anything here? Like, what are we Elixiring? Would you rather just get rid of all these strikes so that we only draw into Blood for Blood? Take the, I mean, with Blood in the deck, I think we can we can take some hits here. And now we, I think we actually end up. I think we should start getting rid of our all our strikes because, isn't it nice to just keep drawing into Blood for Blood at this point? I should have done that earlier, huh? 
We're also gonna get a potion drop. Perfect blood is gonna be perfect for us. So I can block for three, I can do the vulnerable again. Got Juzu. Brutality, Twin Strike, or Sever Soul. Okay, Brutality is the beginnings of a, um, a Rupture deck. We've been there before. Brutality, Blood for Blood. Yes, sir. We're approaching our first meets soon. Reports of his death were greatly exaggerated. Combust plus the brutality, blood for blood, or take the battle trance. Take the card that says battle trance. Well, there's also the fire breathing for the slime boss triple sentry. And you know I love to mention that, even though the battle trance is probably the play. And if we battle trance plus brutality, blood for blood is going to end up killing everything anyways. We don't need the fire breathing for this fight, right? Although it does help me have that in the background. Like it basically, fire breathing solves slam boss. That, that is rest assured. I'm gonna go with a strike to me. Strike to me is definitely really good right now. Definitely really good. Uh, you guys taking a strength up because this fight's gonna go on for a little bit. a lot of damage. It's weird that it says better chance on it, doesn't it? Isn't it? It's quite strange that it says better chance on it. I didn't put the buffer button in the cycle, I know. That it's probably really bad of me, but at the same time I could also just strike him to death. Like so. True Grit. Would you guys take a naked True Grit right now? Because we already have some decent defense going on. I mean, defense offense. Defense offense going on. We're taking the Headbutt to bring back battle, uh, Blood for Blood once you upgrade it. Now we can upgrade Blood for Blood. Actually, I want to upgrade the Brutality so I can get it right away. And that helps me get Blood for Blood going immediately on the first cycle. I want to upgrade both Blood for Blood and the uh, Brutality. And first cycle is going to be nice. Which means Headbutt's going to be nice for that after... I think the um, trigger is interesting as well. Max HP is great for meat purposes. I want to get this first. I can offset the fact that I have brutality opening hand with battle trance opening hand. And we can take a sundial go for infinite. Who's down? Either that or just take the potion belt because potion belt is fucking sick. Sundial infinite. We already had the pommel strike. What do we need for the, the other part? I mean, you guys are tired of infinites, right? But this is an infinite that has six card draw a turn, so it's easier to accomplish. It's for me, it's potion belt remove. I could take attack, but, but I could also take power putt. I don't know if taking potion is necessary, necessarily. Um, are we supposed to be going right now? I'm unsure. By zero 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 zero, you mean like uh, an act one, or are you talking about if I don't take any time on it? Yeah, if you take time on it, first night is obviously good, but I think potion belt. I think potion belt is pretty good as well. I'm not even sure if I should buy the attack, but but it might help me in the side boss. Am I supposed to go right now or am I supposed to just wait for Buffalo to be uh, cheap? Or maybe I'm supposed to wait for Bash? But you mean 0 0 terms of the streak as well? Is it my first? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to go right now. 
Ah, let's go right now. So, but was not in the cycle. Well, that's fine because I can't. It's not really playable the first cycle. We can bring it back anyways. It needs to be upgraded ASAP. Got our meat value. We got our meat value. The problem is I wanted to do uppercut instead of the buffer blood. Fuck. Isn't that kind of awkward? Or I could full block and not do uppercut. At this point, saving life seems pretty nice. Alright, boys, what do you want to upgrade? The Bluff and Bud, right? Seems pretty good. And now we can play that first cycle. Well, speaking of first cycle, here it is. Um, can I just draw it back? Anything we want to do with Tag Pot or anything like this? Slimes. Alright, time to decide, boys. The block ins or smack smack. I could smack smack if I smack smack. It would be right it'd be quite nice if I can battle trends into I have a question. If you do attack bot and cause zero this turn, when you headbutt it, it doesn't cause zero anymore, right? I think we tested that just the other day. Attack pot doesn't. Once you play it, it goes back to its regular cost. We tested that. It just, this is lying to us. I mean, we're pretty strong. But do you guys want to block in? point of blocking is to, to get buff and budge stuff it doesn't mean this turn it means it costs zero for the first iteration but the rest of the turn it, it's yeah to wait for bash but fuck I don't want more slimes uh, yeah but this is a pretty good okay if I get more slimes if I get more slimes this is a, it's a really good this is really good just because he's right at the precipice I don't want more slimes fuck that I'm okay with this I hate that I'm weakened. I hate that I didn't drop up for blood. The hell's up with that? What's up with that? There's the blood, but it's all wrong. The blood is all wrong. I draw cleave, we're in good shape. We don't draw cleave, we're not in good shape. Strike me is better there. What's wrong with me? That better not bite me in the ass.
Emulate exhumed, let me break. Exhumed says nothing. Emulate says big damage. Astrolabe, Potion Belt. Sorry, Astrolabe, Sacred Bark, or Empty Cage. Sacred Bark says hi, Potion Belt is here. Astrolabe says, I see your strikes. Yes, you have striked at me, but what if I give you three upgraded cards instead? Like the Bark and Belt, the Bark, the Barky Belt. Barky Belt is not bad, but I also like having upgraded cards. I mean, we can hold Ancient Pot, Speed Pot, and that's it for the Heart Solve or something. But then I can use these interchangeably and hold onto this Ancient Pot, Speed Pot, and that's like incredible block for the Heart, theoretically with the Bark. I guess we can get by with zero energy or three energy because we have blood for blood, brutality for damage. So you guys really don't like the upgraded cards, huh? I mean, you like it, but you like the bark more. Okay, you like the bark belt? Got a nice ring to it, the bark belt. Not to be confused with anything related to animals or dogs. Or any products of the sort. Three elites into Act 2 Special Elite. Do you guys feel confident that with these potions we can do Act 2 Special Elite? The B&B, &B, the Barking Belt. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling pretty confident in general. I immediately don't feel confident anymore. But I got meat. I like This is the thing about Act 2. I feel confident. First fight. I'm no longer confident. They should make like a YouTube short about like how we feel going into Ascension 20 Act 2. And then immediately after how our thoughts and feelings change. But there are some times where you get like feed, feed, feed on every fight. It's the easiest thing in the world. In fact, I want to go back to those runs where I won. The act two is just... So what are we doing for, for this fight? Are we doing colorless or attack pot? The double cleave or the double weaken? Well, I want to kill one of them. That's the goal. And now I gotta do math. 18, 18, 36, 36, boom. 49. Yeah, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. 49. By the way, guys, I watched The Last of Us episode 3 last night. No spoilers or anything, but I'm curious for those who have watched it. Oh, it's the same lie, right? Yeah, we, we talked about it. This lie where it exists. For those who have watched it, um... What did y'all think? I, I, I've been liking The Last of Us show on HBO. It's quite nice. I also checked out this show called Poker Face. It's like, I like I like Natasha Leone. She's pretty good. But what I especially liked was... Well, I didn't, I didn't have any expectations. I didn't realize that the, the, the show... Each episode is a different cast of characters because she's like solving like these murders. I, li I like these, so it's, I think it's the same director of Glass Out, or Knives Out rather, and I like how, um, you know, I just like that style of show where you kind of have to solve and try to figure out the details and stuff, and it's, it's pretty well made. Poker Face, check it out. I've been watching Last of Us in Spanish, so I wonder how, how much that's affecting my... I didn't get to hear the, the actors' voices, you know, which is probably like a big part of it. But I, I've been enjoying the story was nice. But I'm coming from someone who didn't actually play the game, so now I have to play the game. I know I'm always backwards. I didn't play the game. What does Thunderclap do? Guys, Thunderclap is sort of cute, isn't it? What's up, Logue Dog? How you doing, man? Appreciate you. Welcome back. The Spanish voice actors are pretty good, though. So here it is. We're going to find a prismatic shard, an alchemized, plus a spoon, and a white beast, and a toy ornithopter. Okay. 
Seven, I respect it. I think Bishop is a little bit more realistic and accurate with his predictions, even though Bishop gets me killed. But honestly, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some faith in your. Let's let's go for it. If I see prismatic, I'll buy it just for you. If I see prismatic, I'll buy it, and we'll try to make that a reality for you. First, we gotta survive. The T clap the is much better than the cleave, but the question is, is it better than skipping? Is the T clap better than skipping? The green clap. Wouldn't I rather just upgrade Immolate? I'd rather just upgrade the Immolate and say, no green clap for me. Anything that says clap and green together sounds like an infection or an STD. I don't want any part of it. Leave the claps and the greens away from me. But there's something to be said about AoE 7 damage, which is like cleave, but this one has more. I still have a cleave in my deck. So it's, unfortunately, I still have cleave in my deck. I guess you could talk about combust. Would you rob this relic? Because removal is only 50 gold. Or do you take the, the, the relic, you buy it, because there's no shop. There's no fucking shop. Bronze skills. Alrighty. Now, we know this is a broken-ass event with broken-ass cards. Apparitions, yes. But it makes me lose 15 life immediately. As well as the meat. Well, actually, it, it's still good with meat. It's still good with meat. Because even if I get down to 20, I still heal back up to 32. It's not bad with me. Unless you guys think having a max HP pool is pretty useful. But I don't know. This is having apparitions is pretty useful. So I get I get back up to 39 with my meat and my uh, my burning blood. 38, I mean. Problems when you draw them all at once. That's never fun. Seems sus. It ain't sus. I guess what's sus is that we have ancient pot, speed pot as like our thing. We got meat coming on. The shrug. The shrug feels less good with three energy and less good when I don't need to block when I have apparitions. You know what I mean? Now the shrug is interesting because there's like shrug, headbutt, combo, blood for blood, pummel. So you can do headbutt, free blood for blood into shrug. But I'm going to skip. Yep, I skipped the shrug. You want to nourish the dagger. Let's nourish the dagger. We can stall with the apparitions. We got the dagger, but I can't nourish it for shit. That's kind of lame. Unless colorless pot is huge. All in favor of colorless pot, say aye. All right, so we got secret technique. Now, secret technique means we could just block, play all our apparitions now. Play all three apparitions. And then go for kill. And that's really good because Blood for Blood is going to be free. How does that sound? Apparitions out of deck. Boom, boom, boom. Nothing but gas. The alternative is... What's the alternative? There is no alternative. That is the solution, isn't it? There is no freaking alternative. Now we have Wraith form. Immolate ready to go. Bluff and Blood ready to go. Case in point. Although this thing's scary. Because I'm weakened. But it's okay. So we know we're drawing into Immolate next turn, right? So how about we make it so that we know Immolate's going to kill. If we know Immolate's going to kill... We can play this a little bit better. A little bit smarter. Now that means we have to draw Immolate, which we did.
And I gotta get a meat somehow, somehow, some way. There's one meat in my life. I guess I can get the meat by virtue of Taskmaster punching me in the face. But wouldn't this be nice if I could do uppercut and defend and not worry about this thing being alive? Unfortunately, it's alive. Now, if I do uppercut, cleave, I get my meat and hopefully get my dagger. But what if I just block? So uppercut does what for us? How much does uppercut block? Only blocks three, right? Or does uppercut block four? Either way, I want to get the dagger. Please give me a dagger. If I can end with a dagger to me, I'm very happy. Ah, oh, unfortunate. We tried. So, armaments. You guys want to take armaments plus? Because sometimes that allows me to preserve my apparitions. And if we take armaments plus, we have, bur we have battle trance and brutality. And we can use armaments plus to sometimes preserve the apparitions for next redraw or for headbutt. So we preserve them for a headbutt for a turn that we need it. So let's say we know the next turn I'm going to die. Boom, headbutt the apparition. I feel like armaments plus seems decent, right? Now the problem is bottle flame, yes or no? Well, if you take bottle flame, here's what you can do. You can start with headbutt. What's the purpose of starting with headbutt? Well, you can do battle trance turn one and then headbutt battle trance again. So you have battle trance turn one, battle trance turn two. Of course, that costs one energy to do so. But imagine where you headbutt battle trance at the end of your turn. That means you draw into most of your deck in two turns because you have brutality to draw six and then battle trance to draw three. So you're drawing you're drawing seven turn one. Well, minus one. So you're drawing six turn one because these two are guaranteed. And then you're drawing six plus, well, you're drawing five plus three. You're drawing eight. Okay, so you're drawing six. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, if you have guaranteed head battle trends, for one energy, you can dig through your deck like crazy, which is really good for apparition stuff. But the alternative is, okay, early emulate, so we can manage the collector, or you can take the, the uppercut, so you can just uh, weaken them right away. But I like the idea of headbutt battle trends, because it sounds like it's fancy in terms of digging through your deck for apparitions. Or digging for your deck to get through armaments as well. And armaments is a little bit nice to play if you know you can just upgrade your, your hands that turn without worrying about repercussions of damage because apparitions has your back. And you guys are saying emulate because sometimes emulate is really good for like early collector. Well, Apricot's good for the heart as well. And hopefully we can get, get some dagger nourishment. Oh, uh, GG boys, max HP. Like, what the fuck? But what the fuck is that? Max HP? So now I really gotta find uh, Apparition. Well, shit. Well, I'll be damned. Well, I'll be damned. It's like to save the apparition for another time, which is this is this is exactly what you want to save apparition for another time, right? It's exactly what I mean. And we have now we can nourish a dagger. We do have we do have bronze scales. The problem is the wounds. Are we worried about the wounds? Because I could defend to stop the wound, or I could do damage because it's a damage race. So we already have one wound in the deck. You guys down for two? Is nine damage worth one wound? How do we make how do we make that consideration in our minds? Because you gotta look at it this way. M one wound is less blood for blood stuff. Cause we can kill pretty easily with uh uppercut blood for blood, headbutt blood for blood, and then we finish with a dagger. And remember we had the bronze seals chugging away, so. 
There's one damage worth one wound. It's fine. Like nine damage worth one wound. Yeah, it's fine. I could do apparition now because I'm I'm not gonna redraw it unless you guys are confident that we could redraw it by. I mean, I could do the damage. I could redraw it with headbutt, but that seems a little risky, right? To redraw it with headbutt. Because then I mean, it requires me to find headbutt. Here we get the bash pommel. Now that would be extremely nice if we can find that alongside the blood for the blood coming. We need the blood for the blood to come. The blood for the blood came, so now we gotta. See, so we, we have the headbutt, and we have the dagger. So this is 33. Um, I guess this was a situation where I needed the headbutt and the thing. So this is gonna be 13, 13, 26, 26. And the dagger is doing 15, 15 plus seven, 22, 22 plus 26, it's 48. 48 means he dies on the first Three, three, three. That's not good. That means I have to take seven, 14 damage. I take 14 damage after the fact. How much does this heal me for? 60%, 60% of 40. Puts me in meat range. But then I don't nourish the dagger. Not nourishing the dagger is pretty sad. Nourishing the dagger is pretty sad. Hmm. Could I play this fight differently? Could I play this fight differently? One fight hand is nice. Got burning packs. We're, 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 we're noticing we're kind of low on life. Uh, not low on life, so we're low on energy. I really like the one fight hand with that guaranteed brutality. I wouldn't mind taking some more powers now. Um, is it ever double tap? Double tap sometimes with the uh, Bluffer Blood, sometimes with the Emulate. Double tap seems okay. Burning pack helps me draw into the, the things. We have Frozen Egg. Frozen Egg seems pretty good when you have one fight hand just now. So now my next question is, what's the next upgrade? I think upgrading battle trends seems pretty good, right? We can start upgrading the apparitions so we don't have, we're not forced to play them. But I think upgrading battle trends first and foremost seems pretty good. My next question is, how the hell are we killing the champ? Does anybody have a solution for the champ? Because I forgot to mention in all of this, with a non-nourished dagger, that we don't have a solution for the champ. With the, all, all we need is one rupture and we're right there. And this is a good situation where we want to pommel and draw apparitions now. So I come and want to do this just to see if I draw apparitions, or I can just draw four and hope for the best. Do you think the plus one dig for pommel strike is worth it? Yes or no? This allows me to draw five cards. And if we whiff, and if we whiff. This allows me to get closer to meat, which is nice. I think meat is actually a big priority here. So not only does it allow me to get closer to meat, but it allows me to um, hopefully nourish the dagger here. I want, I want to draw the dagger now. We'll get it back to the dagger, right? Here I can block a little bit. I don't have to play that person now, right? 
But is it worth taking damage? I should be doing damage, but Blood for Blood's got my back for damage. We got the Thorns and Blood for Blood for damage, and then we want to redraw Arvins for the dagger. So we have the, we have the dagger now. I actually want to take some damage from the meat. So how do I take damage from meat? I need to play Apparition to take damage from meat, right? Because right now the dagger is, is nourished. But our meat is not procced. And the meat being procced is pretty poor because we're about to fight an elite. Unless you guys think we don't need meat for the elite. Because here we can block 15. And it's going to die to thorns. Because I did too much damage. Do we ever need anger? Anger seems pretty good in a deck with zero or three energy. If I, I could have left more life so it didn't die to thorns. But the being so close to me is painful. Um, it could take anger or skip. How are we beating the champ? Is it gonna have to be down to like some flex stuff? I'm not sure how we're beating the champ here. We we have potential to get powers. I'm not sure how we're beating the champ. All right, we have Apparition, which is great, and I also have Emblade, which is great. I want to hit Uppercut here. All right, we have Double Emulate, which is fine. What would you rather do? Would you rather do Double Uppercut on the, on the Gremlin Leader to make him weak and invulnerable for the rest of the fight? Or would you rather do Emulate now? If you do Emulate now, it's 42 damage. If you do Double Tap Uppercut, weak and invulnerable for the rest of the fight, and then we can just Headbutt Emulate later on. But that means that, that forces me to find headbutt in time. Because if I don't find headbutt in time, then we're kind of in trouble. But if I do double emulate, I'm getting two burns, which is not that great. This at least makes it vulnerable weaken for the rest of the fight. And then at that point, all we gotta focus on is just doing blood for blood. And sure we can headbutt emulate if we need it. But I'm not sure that's gonna be so possible. I'm kind of leaning towards the uppercut play. Although 42 damage now, killing all the minions seems pretty good. Uh, the burns are not that nice. Plus, having... So we did get the upgrade on the uh, the dagger. We have upgraded an apparition as well. Um, damn, so imagine if I did the uppercut, I could just focus on damage here. Is it ever not do vulnerable and instead just do for uh, cleave strike? I think we, we definitely want to get back into dagger for this fight. It's about time I nourish this freaking dagger. Oh, so we can get emulate next turn and just... Okay, this is good. So we can just bring back emulate next turn, right? They're going to make me weaken and, vulnerable, uh, weaken and frail. If you guys want, what we could do... Okay, I bring back emulate. The min minions are dead. But then what I could do is... Instead, try to bring back the dagger. If we bring back the dagger, we go for the kill. The problem is I'm going to be weakened. So I can kill one of these so I'm not weakened for that long. Who am I kidding? Unfortunately, I'm weakened. We have meat. Meat is here. Alright. So it's already in dagger range, so I should just st stall and wait. Unless you guys think I should do this just in case I need a kill. And a, and a, just in case I need a kill. Because if I don't attack, then I can take one more attack with, with the apparition. So I'm not going to attack. Just in case I need an apparition to stall for the, the dagger. Because we got a nourish dagger. We have to nourish dagger. It's about time, dude. Please tell me I can nourish my dagger. I'm begging you. There it is. 
The meat and the blood. We got the bark and the belt and the meat and the blood. Oh my, not only is it a meat and a blood, it's a flowery meat and blood. Holy. But now I'm still asking the question, how the hell do I beat the champ? Because I didn't get a power. I was hoping for some kind of power with my right hand's frozen egg. So how do we beat the champ? With blood for blood recursion? Do we save an apparition for the big execute turn? And just try to do blood for blood recursions? I don't freaking know. Is rage good here, guys? Rage seems... Was this just, this is a game where we could have bought Sundial, right, and gone infinite? Nah, nah, nah. Carnage. Carnage is unfortunately too expensive to play, right? Um, um, I don't know. Anybody have any solutions for the champ? Oh, I had double tap upgrade. Fuck. Does anybody want to do... Kill the cultist or kill the chosen? What do you guys think? This is a lot of damage on the chosen. I had double tap upgrade. That was my bad, guys. I would have done a shit ton. I'm gonna one be one in cultist at this point. She could die from like random shit, right? So I don't have to, like I could leave her around because she could die to random shit. Or I could just dagger her. I think we can draw back into the upgrade if I dagger her. What if I dagger this guy? What if I dagger this guy? 31, 31 plus. Leave her alive. Get some meat value somehow. How much damage do I have to take to get meat value? I want to get meat value, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to proc the meat here, isn't it? Got the fire pot. Again, how the hell do I beat the champ? I need emoji with my face and Icon's body. Yeah, I gotta make that emoji. Yeah, we got our chat top left, exactly. I'm not sure how to beat the champ. Okay. Cauldron is here. That, hel that helps you beat the champ. Cauldron for power pot. Maybe I'm supposed to buy a power pot. Nunchaku says energy. Nunchaku seems decent. How often am I getting Nunchaku procs? I want to have a targeted exhaust. If I, so if I have like a, a true grit or burning packs, the burning pack that I skipped, by the way, I can get rid of my strikes throughout the fight and then just do blood for blood, uh, devil tap for damage. Because aside from that, I'm kind of lost for what I need to do. Okay, Panacea seems really good. In a deck that has bark. Because you could just panacea some, some flex pots, some speed pots. I might even be tempted to take panacea so I can use panacea for the flex pot. For the speed pot. And if I have 10 dexterity, I don't think I lose against the champ. Yes, I could hold that potion for the heart. I can hold that potion for the heart or I can take it because I think I need it against the champ here. Unless I'm unless I'm overestimating the champ, I don't think I am, because my apparitions are only so long. Uh, I guess I can try to save them for execute, but maybe I can try to avoid execute altogether. I just don't have damage scaling. The best I could do is just keep doing double tap blood for blood. So I like Penis here for the speed pot stuff. I also got to say I really like Evolve because Evolve has mummified hand attached to it, and it also helps me with my emulate. 
But I'm not going to buy a ball for 81. I'd rather take Panacea Remove. Unless you guys really want to take um, Nuchaku. Which I'm not that thrilled about. In general, Panacea is kind of expensive. Because if it doesn't work with the potion, it's just kind of a dead weight. Whereas, dupe putt obviously is pretty decent, but what am I dupe putting? Am I trying to go for a big turn where I dupe putt, double bu double tap, and then tons of blood for bloods into like crazy amount of damage for the kill? I'm not sure. In general, yeah, this is a tough fight. We, we don't have like any saving grace here. Our deck has no... I can't even scale towards deck size because I have no exhaust. So if I had some exhaust... I think I didn't plan for the champ properly. I needed to find at least one tool, and I have zero. We could hope that skill pot does it. Now, what can skill pot do? It can give me spot weakness. What else? Spot weakness and maybe second winds, power through. I don't know. You know what I could do is I, I think take the panacea for the speed pot and we say that 10 dexterity is what I'm using to win this fight. Which is a little bit awkward because I don't have that much block. And what's the point of 10 dexterity anyways? It just buys time for you to keep doing more blood for bloods. And then I guess I try to save one apparition for the, the execute. And this fight is looking tragic for us. Jesus Christ. Huh. You guys want to buy Cauldron? Nah, I mean, I don't have to... This is tragic. Panacea Deep is too expensive? Yes. Should I just take Panacea and Skill Pot and maybe Skill Pot does it? Cauldron looks like the best chance for beating it for you. But it's such a... Horrible feelings have to buy that, isn't it? There's so many po powers as well. We can. I only need one power. What about just panacea remove and say ten dexterity is enough? I can do panacea and skill and help the skill saves me. Yes. I want to remove a strike, but... So I think I have to have one apparition at least upgraded so that I can... Just in case it gets the execute, I have it for the execute. What is that? What, how do you guys feel about that? To me, I feel like that's appropriate. Just to have one apparition upgraded, hold on to it for execute as a as a last... Last... Uh, last ditch effort. The other upgrade would be like... Double tap. But yeah, let's upgrade at least one. And let's see... So we can do skill pot now. Uh, if it's spot weakness, we won't get to play it this turn, but at least we have armage to upgrade them, right? And that's worth something. Okay, we have Panacea of Flex. And that's how we win. So we just use Ancient Pot for our artifacts. That's how we win. Ah, uh, we figured out how to win. I mean, that means we have to use both our potions. We have to waste our Ancient Pot, but that's fine. We'll find more agent putts. We'll find agent putts, it's fine. Transfer armor. Is what you want to transfer armor? Is that is that was intention to save the apparitions? I might have saved this in another life if I did that. 
Yeah, I guess that's a good call. Transfer for armor is a good call, isn't it? Like double tap dagger next turn. I could transfer to Panacea and I need a glug. So I sh you're saying I should have looked for Panacea first before I glugged, is what you're saying? Which is pretty reasonable, isn't it? Transfer for armor not only does it upgrade everything, it allows me to maybe upgrade my apparitions. It also allows me to save a glug. Yeah, you're right. Transfer for armor is always better because we can just find Panacea. And if we miss, okay, we glug. And if we don't miss, well, then yeah, we save a potion. Yeah, you're right, you're right. What do I do here? Why does this guy have seen some fortune when says immediately? Like, what do I do about that? I guess in my mind, I was already okay with losing the potion. Um, I guess I'm posting the operation now. I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade the double tap so I can do double tap combos for the win. But this is awkward because I guess if I go now, I'm not going to be vulnerable for the execute, but I don't have the life for execute. So how do I do this? Do we look? Hmm. We can draw to go to armor for block. If we try to block this in, that allows us to save this for execute. But what if I just do enough damage where it doesn't matter? I am weakened right now. I would like to draw into armaments. If I draw into armaments, I can even draw into flexes. I'm gonna draw first. Because this gives me a double tap. And I think that helps me get lethal as well. Unless I'm wrong. We're just gonna use Apparition now, and we're gonna say, okay, Execute sucks, but we're gonna try to kill before the Execute happens, right? Unless you guys think that's crazy talk. Uh, cause he's not gonna be vulnerable next turn. I could make him vulnerable next turn, which is probably pretty nice, but I... Did I play this wrong? I could make him vulnerable next turn. What if I'm supposed to keep the Apparition? What if I'm supposed to keep the Apparition and just block here? Because if it gets to Execute, at least I have Apparition for Execute. But that's kind of... Hmm. I was thinking of doing Apparition now and going full damage. But then Execute just kills me, huh? Because he's not vulnerable next turn. I don't have a lot of energy. Unless you guys think double tap, does that, does that kill double tap blood for blood headbutt twice back to back for this turn, the next turn and then the following turn, is that enough leap for lethal? I'm gonna say I think it is. I think just doing this is enough for lethal next turn. Wait, I didn't block. Oh, that's fine. That's good. We get to keep that person anyways. That's fine. It's fine. I, I would have liked to do upcut as well. Now it's a bit tough because we now we're going to have to um, try to draw into bash, no? Should we try drawing to bash first? I can't draw into bash first, unfortunately. We could kill with um with firepot as well if you want to. Do it right now. But I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm gonna try to draw into the um apparition. If we don't, well then tough luck. I think I play that a little bit messed up though. We drew the apparition, so GG. Just like we planned. Just as we planned. Did I have lethal as well? I had lethal with potion as well if I needed it. But this allows me to get 
the ritual dagger, right? This allows me to get ritual dagger, which is quite nice. Okay, I didn't get dagger. I tried though. I tried to get dagger. Berserk, let me break our bludgeon. Berserk is not bad, that gives me some energy. Berserk also has Momified Hand. We also have Panacea for the Berserk sometimes. So I kind of like it because it has Momified Hand. We can block it if we need to. And energy is always nice. Versus Limit Break. Now Limit Break doesn't do anything because we don't have anything for it. But for me it's just Berserk. Alright, now we have Sneko White. Now Sneko White is weird because we have some zero cost stuff. We can offset the zero cost stuff with the Momified Hand. Or we can take Fusion Hammer, because next all the powers we're taking now are going to be upgraded. And then beyond that, we have an armaments already, which means, okay, so what, are, what is our... If we take Fusion Hammer, what are we doing with Campfires? We have to Recall, and that's it. There's nothing else at Campfires. It's just Recall. So Fusion Hammer could be awkward if I don't find a way to do something else with the Campfires. But for right now, I could just Recall and then figure out something else in the future. Because I was kind of looking forward to the campfires to upgrade maybe like a Palmer Strike <laughs> or I guess Disarm Panacea. Disarm Panacea. Maybe Dagger. I think it's a Nourisher Dagger there though. Okay, so what do we do? Fusion Hammer and Cry at campfires. Force Rest into Act 4 is really bad as well. But what's the alternative? Busted Crown? That feels worse when you have some nice powers that we can be finding. Mm -hmm. And then there's Sneko. Sneko's oh, okay. Fusion hammer. Let's go. We'll find a way. We'll find a way to uh, handle ha campfires. For right now, we just recall and then avoid campfires altogether. So we have a couple of vents here. For Juzu, and then we have two, three elites, four elites with late shop. Not bad. What's this? All right. Is this a deck that can do these many elites though? Nothing about this deck is really streaming like multiple elites, personally. Unless you guys think so. Is this deck streaming multiple elite city? What it's streaming to me is... Get your meat right now. And then, so get your meat and then try to get dagger. If you nourish dagger, we're in good shape. Really? The dagger's coming up. So how is this going to work? Next, She's going to come back next round. Ah, man. If I didn't do so much damage, I could headbutt the... The armaments and upgrade the dagger. I think we got a nourish dagger because daggers will be one of the only things I think to kill these elites. Like a nourish dagger, so we have to nourish it. Is that making the fight tar harder for me? Maybe. Maybe it is. Nourishing Dagger does seem pretty important. Okay. It's nourished, but not upgraded. Like I wanted. We get full heal. So, me and the bone plus magic flower. Full heal. That's always nice. Okay. First Juzu is a shop, which we definitely didn't want. The shop is terrible. But I gotta say, is the shop terrible when you have speed pots? Like, how terrible can a shop be with speed putts? Who's a Discovery fan? Add an element of RNG, you upgrade Discovery, all of a sudden, Discovery is... 
Okay, let's remove a strike and then take the speed pot, or do we just not? How does Peepot win the elite versus something like a thorn pot, which can kill the nemesis? Damn, I did not want to see that shop. Okay, what color risk could we get here? I love discovery, yeah. Another panacea is really good. Apotheosis is really good because we have fusion hammer. So Apotheosis is a little bit awkward with armor mints, but we have fusion hammer, so Apotheosis still plays. And we can say, okay, armor mints is a sad side effect, but whatever. And then we have bandage up for healing, which is healing six. Or we can take impatience, because but we have enough attacks where I feel like impatience doesn't play. So I think another panacea makes sense because we have Berserk, we have Speed Pots. Banish up feels like it kind of is cool to heal 6, but at the same time it's like, eh, I don't, I'd rather not draw that. So the question comes down to, do you guys want Apotheosis? Or are you guys happy with your Armaments Plus? Apotheosis or Armaments Plus, what is it? What's it going to be? Maybe Apotheos, maybe I'm just supposed to do enough for me. Eh, nah, let's do this. Let's do Panacea. And does Impatience do enough? Do we have too many attacks or not? I can imagine a world where in the turns where we have attacks, Impatience is horrible, but the turns where we don't, it's going to be very hard because we draw six cards. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven attacks. We could take advantage up, but I won't. I should have nursed the dagger here. Yet again. Yet again. I guess I can take this hit, because I take this hit, we are into... We are in meat range. Meat is full heal. Meat is a full heal. And now we want to get dagger. Can we get the dagger with the? Oh yes, we can. And one way, one one nice caveat is this: is that we can get. We can get the dagger upgraded more often because of the, um... Okay, well the only problem here, guys, is... The only problem is this thing's reflecting a lot of damage. But, maybe that's not a problem because we could... We have meat heal, we're fine. See? Oh my god. So with all these speed pots, we have two panaceas in the deck. All right, and three speed pots. And now we're getting offered f feel no pain. What does feel no pain do? Feel no pain is the start of something juicy. It's not good against awakened one, but what is it good for? Feel no pain could be the start of something juicy, or it could also be the start of a curse. It's just right now, it's just straight up a curse, isn't it? Yeah, but taking zero one of the apparition, is that really worth it? Because how much am I taking for drawing Funeral Pain in the first place? You know? I guess it makes sense if I find, like, Corruption, Dark Embrace. But it feels like it's a waste. Okay, maybe it helps. Maybe it helps with Donut Deca, but Donut Deca is... It's... Mm. Alright guys, what's better? So the Still Chaos or Speed Pot? I feel like I already had too many Speed Pots as it is. But you're probably saying, you know what man? With Bark, you can never have too many Speed Pots. Well, Speed Pot is kind of awkward in general because I don't really have a block game. Because I haven't been drafting blocks because... Wait, I actually have zero block game. But it makes sense because I'm Apparition. It's still okay, guys. Can get me out of a pinch. I feel like, 
I feel like Firepot could also help me not die to some of these elites. The goal is to get Ritual Dagger nursed by the time this is all said and done. Got the Berserk. Got the Disarm. And we got so the dagger is ready to be nourished. I could just panacea and like let this discard. I mean, we have a lot of things. Do we even need to play emulate, or do we want to just wait? I'm, I love this. I love this unconventional deck stuff when you have panacea potion play. But I gotta be using my potions more willy nilly because if I get a potion drop. That's not good. Maybe I will use Firepot just to guarantee the, the dagger nourished. If the dagger is nourished, then that is going to be how I kill Giant Head. Because right now, Giant Head is a little scary. But if I have a massive slow and then I double tap the dagger, I can see it getting there. The Giant Head scares me the most. It's getting close. I have to headbutt it back, I guess. Could be a block option with reckless charge, but I don't have evolve. So do I take another fire pot for giant head because giant head is that scary? Like, should we get rid of speed pot because giant head needs the the, the the fire pot, or is that crazy talk? Maybe even fire pot is better against the reptomancer, right, to kill it because now we have the dagger. So we want to make sure that Reptomancer can die within dagger range with double fire pot. Giant head, same purpose. I know I bought the speed pot, but I actually think speed pot is not that useful. In, in hindsight, so it was a bad purchase. It was a bad purchase and I feel bad about it. Please don't giant head. Even this fight's a little bit annoying. Because... Well, as you see here, my AoE is not that great. I mean, I suppose I do have um, Immolate. I gotta draw the Immolate, of course. We have Panacea, which is useful. I'm not actually utilizing the Panaceas at the moment. I've come to realize. And I can draw Emulate to kill these things. I'm really hoping I do. Because if I don't... If I draw, draw Emulate next turn, we're screwed, right? So what if I just play... Um, This is risky, because next turn... If I play that person now, we don't have to worry about next turn at all. But if I don't play that person now, I could draw the next apparition or I could draw emulate. Now what are the what is the hand in which I don't draw either of those? If I don't draw either of those, then it's pretty shitty. So maybe we should play around the world in which but the thing is I really want to get bashed down. Worst case scenario, I will do chaos, still chaos because I'm getting these potions and I'm not utilizing them. 
That's pretty bad. Let's just use this potion now then. Because we're, we're not utilizing our potions. I, sh I think I should be. As long as I don't do enough damage. If I, if I don't do... That's good. This allows me to actually straight up just save, save the apparitions again. But more importantly, I want to get to the ritual dagger here. Okay, unironically, is it flex so that I could flex Panacea? And my strength gain, my scaling is flex. Is that crazy talk? I wasted a speed pot purchase. I have one more removal with Smiling Mask, which is not bad. Flex Panacea is how we gain strength. So Flex becomes of zero cost, four strength. Granted, we have the artifact. And what is it, another way to do damage in this deck? I'm down one potion. Here, I can use people for this fight. We have the apparitions. Could I person so I could take the damage? How about I just take the damage? Like, I had meat in the bone, I should just be taking damage, right? Keep the apparition for a rainy day. What's the point of taking damage though? I don't have to. Well, I guess the point is you take the damage because you can save the, the apparition for another another situation. But I don't think the fight's going that long. Why did I add a burn? Who knows? Lord knows. So I can get the flex. How about we draw into flex? So here's what we're doing. Our point is to draw into flex because we have panacea, right? Wait, do I have lethal? All right, so much for looking for panacea. We just have lethal. All right, that's, that's, that's what I meant by self... That's what I meant by nurturing the dagger. The nurturing the dagger is what we're going to use to kill elite. So now a giant head is totally doable. Uh, do you guys like metallicize because it is a mummified hand egg or not really? Because it doesn't help that much against Awakened One. And what does Metallicis help me with in general? Nothing really, right? So yes, there's a power, but not the one we care about. Now we have infinite healing. We got the Mind Bloom. Want a Ritual Dagger, this guy. I could have done match ritual dagger there. I could have ritual dagger right there, could, right? Right? Wait a minute. I could have ritual dagger there. Yeah, suffering so clay with the, the berserk is quite uh, with the um, metallic is quite nice as well. Now, how am I going to get back into the ritual dagger in time? age-old question, how the hell are we going to bring that back in time? We 
headbutt. Headbutt is the solution. Helix. Helix is really awkward with brutality. What the fuck? Rupture! Hey, we got a rupture. Alright, unfortunately, rupture is really awkward with the. Okay, backup prep is missing, but okay, I got a rupture. But maybe I don't even need defense anymore because at this point, we don't need defense because. I mean, I know I bought the speed pot, so we can use speed pots for the heart. I know flex is also my panacea scaling as well. We have all the things. I should probably still remove a strike though, because I, I think if I'm going to add a card, I'm going to add an attack and not a defense. So I'll do that for that purposes. All right, we have rupture just in time for the giant head. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take advantage of. I won't be able to take advantage of. Uh, Helix. It's quite awkward, I must say. Helix, maybe sometimes against the heart, I don't have to play Helix. I can do like. It's okay to take damage here, right? Or just play the apparition to block life. What you, isn't it okay to take damage here? We heal so much anyways. Apparitions are much better on later later. Uh we can get our flex. So now we have a lot of money, a lot of uh here's a situation where you want the apparition. But it's neither here nor there because we can get our beautiful meat full heal. But more than anything is I really want to get my um my dagger. It's worth doing the potion just for dagger, right? Damn. But can I ask you though, where the hell are my potions? I've done a couple of fights that with no potions and now I'm feeling kind of sad. So we can do another event. We don't need any more events. We can just take more fights. More fights gives us more dagger nourishment. It also gives us more potions. Now what does Reaper do? Reaper says yes. Reaper says yes. Even though I don't have a lot of max HP, it still says yes. I'm adding too many cards to my deck. I have a feeling I am doing that. Here we have to draw into Apparition. So it'd be nice if I um, draw into that person here. If not, it's not the end of the world. Because we can Reaper back up. It's just a little bit scary, yes. To take this damage. To be honest, it's perfect meat. Pretty bad double tap turn though, because I've added so many random cards to my deck that my deck is now less consistent. Look at all these randomized cards I added to my deck. My deck is, I need to get some, heavy card draw because my deck is really not feeling consistent right now. By any means. I 
And we're also not going to get to nourish. Be full heal anyways is fine. No nourishment, unfortunately. What's up, Esther? What event were we looking for? We do have Amamori. And I guess finding a, a... So, I guess we take the event for two reasons. It's doing well. We take the event because it might give me Amamori stuff, but I think we've already exhausted most of the events, and there also might be a, a treasure chest. If it's a treasure chest, we have Matryoshka to use. So that's probably worth it. We have so Reaper is a bad heal because like I don't actually have the max AP to take advantage of Reaper. I figured maybe, maybe I would take advantage of it, but as it turns out, okay, Reaper, just Reaper for damage. Yeah, I could have just taken the the event maybe to look for match or or more stuff, but what are the odds that it actually comes to, to fruition there? Um, here I want to nourish dagger, of course. That is pretty clear. Pretty freaking clear. There's the dagger. It's not as nourished as I want it to be. Should we try to greed for apotheosis, or you guys don't care? Okay, what is double fatal pain doing for me? Uh, at this point, it's pretty troll because I added way too many randomized cards to my deck. Unless I get card draw, I can't take the second final pin. It doesn't do enough. I added way too many random cards. I think the that the point being, I think random card was Reaper and Flex. Although Re Flex at the time was pretty good because I didn't have Rupture, and Flex with Panacea was a cute way to actually gain full strength to turn. Especially if Headbutt, sometimes you can get eight strength, right? Fetal pain. It doesn't do enough. I'm actually worried about the statuses in that heart. I don't have evolve. I, I think I, I'm one second wind away from um, second wind away from like being pretty decent. But I think I'm just fucked in this fight. Actually, so we have the rupture. We have the rupture. We have to disarm. So first and foremost. Um. First and foremost. Brutality Rupture, is, I'm playing it for this fight. And then we're going to try to hit Armaments for Disarm so we can... We draw first. Okay. And then I hit the thing. That's fine, it happens. My question is, what potion should I use so that this fight is not so brutal for me? So we have Rupture scaling away. We could use Apparition or we could save it. The problem with Apparition is that... Okay, I want to play Apotheosis, but I want to do Immolate as well. So, how do I do Immolate Apparition Cleave? I think we just don't do Apotheosis right now. So, we take the hit to the face. Um, how do we beat this fight? Do we just try to get Rupture Scaling to the point where we kill? Because what else is... What else are we playing? We're probably playing Berserk for Energy. Probably play Berserk for energy. But maybe that's not a power play. Maybe I won't play Final Pain with Berserk. I could take a hit. we we'll take this hit. I have Reaper in the deck. And that's a big heal. So I don't have to do Apparition, but I might as well. Actually, I could just do Apotheosis Immolate. Knowing Reaper could heal me. The problem with Reaper healing me is that... Maybe I should do that to take advantage of Reaper heal. I use this opportunity to upgrade my whole deck, right? Because I need the upgraded deck to beat this fight. And yes, it hurts, but we have Reaper, and this gives us a reason to use Reaper. But I could also just not take the damage and use Reaper for when, when I... Okay. I could also just not take the damage and use Reaper for when you actually are taking damage, but here's the thing. 
the point of your job, ap apotheosis is so that I could be more picky about my apparition usage. That's what I'm saying. So I know people are saying, don't take damage if you're going to just take a damage just to heal. Well, the point is, I'm taking damage so that I do not waste my apparitions because I think I'm going to need them later on. So that later on I'm going to use apparitions so that I can just go full damage with my rupture. So my rupture is going to be, so I think this is the play. This gives me self from clay. I have Reaper. I could headbutt that person now. So that I don't take any damage. And then by the time we get Reaper, Reaper's gonna heal like a shit ton. Unless you guys wanna headbutt something else. Like we could headbutt Battle Trance instead. If we headbutt Battle Trance instead, I still have a chance to whiff, right? If I kill these things with Reaper and like strike, um, I can actually block this damage straight up. Just block it. We could bring back the trance, sure. Or just bring back the apparition, which is what we want. But why would I want to waste liquid memories? You know what I'm saying? When I have my deck has tools. Because usually liquid memories is that as a tool. Yes, at the worst I can use liquid memories, but the point is to avoid that. That trench does not force guarantee give you apparition or reaper. It doesn't. But what I am getting close to is double tap dagger, which is, could be useful to just get out of this fight. And my double tapping dagger, I can then lead into um, funeral pain berserk, and then we just have apparitions for the final second phase, and then we have a lot of life, lo a lot of rupture strength. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I'm trying to help you see why it's not necessarily correct to think about like memories like that. It's kind of wasteful. Uh, we can play this a lot of different ways. We could do... Could just apparition now, sure. That's a dagger. I kind of want to keep, uh, but do, do, but do I want to wait? But but do I want to keep the ghosty armor? So we got the Reaper. Is Fetal Pain worth it? Because I'm wasting apparition here for like no reason. When I could honestly could have just brought back like Immolate and killed. If I brought back Immolate and killed, we're fine. But now we're wasting another apparition for what? Because what if I just had double tap for the, the dagger as well? But I, I want to nourish the dagger. Hmm. I want to nourish the dagger. I hate that I'm using all my apparitions right now. And next turn is really bad because double tap is doing nothing. I have way too much block in the deck. So for a deck that has a lot of damage, I have way too many block cards. Like I'm way too many defense per turn when I'd rather be drawing attacks. So this is my problem. I need to draft attacks. Because I took away all my strikes, which are just better than defense right now. And all my second half of things are all powers or skills or something. And none of them are actually doing damage. I need to put damage cards like Sword Boomerang, Heavy Blade, anything. At this point, I need any attack. Because you can see this next hand is horrible. And attacks are the name of the game because if I attack, I win. Eh. I really don't want to be wasting another apparition next turn. I might actually use Liquid Memories just to make this fight less awkward, but it's a waste of Liquid Memories because the fight is not necessarily in trouble. So I, don't, I shouldn't use Liquid Memories like that. You know? Sweet Pot is for the heart, if anything. You like using potions, Shavin. You, you, like, to, you like to glug glug. 
Uh, the main thing is I wanted to draw my card, my, my attacks. So I'm thinking I want to draw into my uppercut pommel. Get my attacks going. Yeah, but the potions... We're at the end of the game now, so now I gotta be mindful about my potions because these potions are very good for the heart, right? So you gotta be mindful about the potions because these are the last couple of bosses, and I may not get potions back, so I have to start saving these potions for the heart. I don't like the because I want to get the attacks going. I don't want to have to use our apparitions next turn. Having to use apparition next turn is like awkward to me. But this is also not that great of a liquid memories to use at this time. I can even kill this guy now though, with liquid memories. If I draw into double tap, I can kill this guy now. If I draw into double tap, I can kill this guy now. Uh, and all but then I'm taking a lot of damage hmm. I, I could do the thing where I kill them now This gives me meat. Meat's always nice. These things are gonna kill themselves with thorns, so let's just do that. Let them die to thorns. I put myself in like a low predicament, I guess. But the point is to get a lot of lethal now because we have... Nothing but lethal coming up, right? I can leave the apparition so I can headbutt next turn. If I leave the apparition, I can headbutt next turn for lethal. I mean, headbutt into apparition next turn. Or I can headbutt for lethal, right? How do I headbutt for lethal? With double tap? Or not. How much does this do? Lethal, right? Picture perfect. And now we have full heal with our meat. It's a 22. Perfect heal. And now we should get one more potion for the heart. We're good. I'm okay with that. Okay with how that looks. I didn't have to use a potion. Is this fight scary? Well, with, pain, with Final Pain, I think this fight's solved, no? Sucks that I'm wasting my beautiful helix for nothing. That was pretty shitty. Because imagine if I could just like upgrade those, not waste that apparition, not and not lose. Aha, but we have flex panacea. Okay. 
So we have Flexo. Okay, I, I need my I need my apparition. I'm at apotheosis. Apotheosis, please. Uh, I want to try to do double tap dagger. So fuck. I want to draw first to double tap dagger, but how should we play this? Want to apparition this or just take it? I think we have to bring back dagger with double tap. No? Or you think that's too? Too greedy. The double type dagger is how we're gonna really do the big damage here. Because we're kind of behind the damage curve. But how do we give double type dagger correctly? That means we're gonna have the headbutt and then hope that double tap is there with it. Seems kind of. Seems kind of ambitious, but nourishing, nourishing the dagger is not bad because that can then make the Act 4 Elite trivial. Although the Act 4 Elites are probably already trivialized a bit. Not necessarily. Our draws can be pretty bad. We're severely lacking card draw this deck. So I could Apparition, I could just take it to the face. Now, taking it to the face obviously puts me pretty low for no reason. Hmm. So the question is, do we stall for dagger? How important is the double tap? I'm a stall. I think that might have been a mistake, but here we are. Especially looking at this turn. This turn is awful. But this is what Reaper's for, right? This is what Reaper's for. I can't even use a blood from blood. This is what Reaper's for. What if I just bash this arm so I don't take as much damage? Bastard's arm so I don't take as much damage. Or make him make him vulnerable so that he dies to the dagger. And if he dies to the dagger, then I have to 1v1 this girl. Which I can get back to full life of Reaper. I can get back to full life of Reaper. Problem is, what if next turn I can't block? And next turn I can't kill. If I can't kill or block next turn, I'm dead. There's there's a likelihood of me losing next turn. Whereas if I do at least defend disarm, I don't take as much damage this turn. If I do double bash now, I gotta pray that I hit apparition or pray that I hit the Reaper. I don't like my next draws at all. Really bad next draws, what the hell? Whereas I have block in my hands here. We'll live on the wild side. Cause my whole point in all this, my true whole point in this whole thing, was to get headbutt. But now headbutt is at the bottom of my deck. And now, our operation is premature. And it's all gone to shit. And now it's all gone to shit. It's a premature head, but.
Oh, next turn is brutal, actually. Next turn is so bad. Jesus Christ. Could preserve this life altogether, or I could just say next turn I'll take the damage. And we're gonna. Maybe I try to kill this guy with blood for blood and try to kill this guy with dagger. Double tap dagger on this guy. And then. I don't know, because we have to be more mindful of our damage. Dagger's our main kill source. Here's what I can do I can just apparition and take the hit next turn. If I do full block here and keep the apparition around. We're at 23. Just war cry the um defend. I want Hebba to do a lot more for me, but I could just war cry the defend, I guess. But now we want to start pushing for lethal, that's the thing. I might want to start pushing for lethal. I could war cry now, or I could war cry the defend. What do you think is better? War cry now or war cry the defend? War cry now helps us push for lethal while he's vulnerable. That's pretty important because we want to kill this thing. Our deck is now upgraded. We should be we should be in good shape. I don't mind up war crying the defend, I guess. But I want to push for lethal while they're vulnerable. Warcry could draw a lot of different things as well. But it also can draw complete shit. I, I guess I kind of want to block this turn. I get this out of deck because this blocks for this turn. Although I want to do one extra strike for. The vulnerable man. Alright, so we're back to meat value. And now we gotta double tap this guy. The word tap didn't come to be. We got the apparition. The problem is we I think we're dead next turn. I think we're dead next turn. I can kill this guy next turn. But I I would need to kill Decca with double tap ritual dagger. Which is possible. It's possible to do that. Double tap ritual dagger and I can do that. Alright, it's possible. It's time to do the apparition, huh? Double tap Richard Dagger can do it. We got it. Double tap Richard Dagger and yeah, we win. Perfect. Let me just do the math real quick. So if I do double tap uppercut, it ends up getting vulnerable. And then this should do the, th the thing. And then we gotta kill the next thing, no problem, because we have a lot of strength. And GG. Potion is preserved. Life is good. I just kinda saw how, I kinda saw it playing out that way. I kinda saw it playing out the way where I was gonna have to ritual dagger her with double tap, which is why I saved it. And now we can just get lethal here. And perfect meat. Forced, I'm forced to rest. Forced rest sucks. You can buy a potion at the shop, it's fine. You can also remove another card. The problem with removing a card is... In reality, I think I want to move some defense and start adding more attacks. If I have a couple more attacks, we're in good shape. Forced rest is tragic. Uh, Short Boomerang is a good attack to add, but you know what's also really good to add? Is adding speed pots going into the heart with two panaceas. With two panaceas, you can just get 20 dexterity and never lose. Now, 
So boomerang is a nice way to dump your strength. But having 20 dexterity is a nice way to live your life. That's weird. We have apparitions plus 20 dexterity. We should be able to live for a long time, and the rupture should just scale to win anyways. And what about draw pot? Draw six cards. You're saying draw six cards is important because you want to get your rupture online. You want to get your. You want to be able to draw into apparition when you need it, and you want to get your funeral pain online. I guess makes your other turns better. If we do, we are locking draw. It struggles off the back of not drawing, right? Is what you think. But once we have everything in play. You're saying 10 dexterity is good enough for the heart? I, I incline to agree because we can just disarm for later on as well. Disarm could handle some of the multi attacks. We even have this in some situations. Reaper for the tail end. Yeah, I can see drop up being fine. Keep in mind, we also have power pot for the, the heart. So, what if I just do power pot and 10 dexterity? I wish I had a little bit more money so I could remove. That would be quite sick. I hate how I waste my my big beautiful helix, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, I can't keep the apparition. I wish I maybe I should have upgraded more apparitions before. Not a waste of helix, I suppose. I suppose that isn't a waste. Oh, we didn't get to upgrade ritual, but that's fine. So we should come back for ritual later on, right? I can just do ritual now. If I do ritual now... I can head with the ritual, but if I do ritual now... Fight's over. With the fire pot. So long as they draw. So long as they drop a potion. Because getting back ritual again with headbutt double tap it seems pretty hard to do. If I do the ritual now, what's better? Firepot ritual, just get it out of the way, or try to headbutt it later on? But also just. Ritual here as well. Is Headbutt going to be our savior? Our next draws are pretty bad. Our next draws are pretty scary, actually. Because if I don't get exactly Apparition, I think I'm dead next turn. or else we're pretty scared, pretty pretty dead here. I would have to bring back, maybe I should have done, maybe I should have just a dagger last turn to go for the kill. Like, was it ever go dagger last turn on the spider shield and say, like having to use drop pot here pretty much sucks. Let's say we don't use drop pot, let's say we save the drop pot. I think we have to use drop pot. Which means we're gonna have the same struggle against the heart and drop pot for the heart was pretty useful. But I can imagine we were supposed to actually just do fire pot dagger on the spire shield so that I can kill this turn and then just go for the 1v1. And now we're in a situation where, fuck. I guess I could take it. Ah, uh, one sec. <laughs>
Um, okay. It's unfortunate. So, we're gonna do... Yeah, this is unfortunate, but I think... Okay. Alright. It happens. Make sure we can draw a double tap for the dagger, right? I want the panacea to hit the strength, so I'm actually gonna do berserk first. And my goal is to get headbutt for the dagger. Problem is, what if I don't draw the dagger next turn? Double tap. Because this is, this is not doing burns, right? And if that's not doing burns, Then I can bring back dagger, double tap this, kill it. And then we just 1v1. But Yeah, it's fine. So this is not doing burn, so we're fine, right? And we kill the next one, double tap. Okay. Okay, we're fine. This adds it to the discard, that's fine. How much is double tap on the dagger doing? Enough, so I, I, could, I could do some damage here. But they get blocked, don't they? How much block do they get? I guess it's worth noting that... I guess I could attack it just in case I don't get a double tap. No, but I'm gonna get double tap, aren't I? Guaranteed. And he doesn't get blocked next turn, right? He only blocks himself, or does he block both of them? I don't, I don't know. Does he shield both of them? If he shields both of them. I guess it's worth it. Just, just I'm just gonna do 134. I think the most he gives is 30 block. So I think we go here. I think it's 134. I think I did my play correctly. I can do the play correctly. I think I did it correctly. So I got the double. Actually, I've done more damage over here personally so that the bash does it by itself. I don't have to waste double tap. Nah, it's just fine. Ooh, it's a waste of double tap though. There's ways to double tap this now. Because I could double tap emulate next turn to kill this guy. Wait a minute. Double tap emulate next turn to kill this guy, no? No, I can't do it double tap emulate. I could do double tap. Next turn. Ah, this guy should be able to die next turn, it's fine. Wait, what if I kill this guy? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What if I put dagger on top and I kill this guy with emulate fire pot? How does that sound? Emulate fire pot this guy and then kill this guy with dagger next turn. How does that sound? Because we don't really need the fire pot for the heart, right? Unfortunately, I'm only keeping two potions, but it's fine. Power pot plus speed should be enough. Hey, it seems kind of a weird play, though. I can dagger this guy next turn, because I'm worried about my block next turn. I think I like it.
Maybe I can headbutt it. Suppose I can headbutt it, but then we're taking extra damage. Do we care? This doesn't need to be nourished anymore. Unless we plan to headbutt it anyways. Let's do plan to headbutt it anyways. Flex pot. Wow. Oh, I guess a worm ring as well. What the hell? Like the perfect things for the end of the game. Flex, speed pot for the heart, fuzz tower pot, and super ring for dump the strength. That's like GG. Hope super ring doesn't bother me because I, I remember I don't have drop pot, so that is scary. We don't have drop pot. That is pretty scary. Maybe I didn't even super ring, but no drop pot is scary. I'm thinking. This is tough. Because if I Panacea, I can stop the Vulnerable. Right? If I Panacea, I can stop the Vulnerable. Or I can try to Preserve Helix. Now what's more important? Preserving Helix or stopping Vulnerable? I think Preserving Helix is impossible. Because I want to get Panacea for the Vulnerable. But and then I ask you, is Vulnerable even worth it? Because don't we have Apparitions in the deck? If you have Apparitions in the deck, who cares about Vulnerable? Just do Panacea for your flex or do Panacea for your uh, your decks, right? So then I think up, okay, so if I can't preserve Helix, I want to preserve Helix, it won't happen. Because who cares? Our plan is to Apparition anyway, so if we don't Apparition, we we'll probably lose. Unless the world is you keep Helix, then Helix blocks the big attack, and then we have Apparition for the multi-attack, whatever. I don't think preserving Helix is going to happen. So, then we want to Battle Trends first. So we Battle Trends first, get rid of Helix, and if we find Apparition... Sorry, if we find Apotheos as our armaments, now we can do Panacea and get both of our Flex and Speed Spot now. Or we can keep one for the Vulnerable. But like going back to the first point, why stop Vulnerable we have Apparition? So then I can just get all my things. And we also have Power Pot, but I want to do Power Pot on a turn where I actually need the energy, so I might save it. For our armaments turn to get them upgraded or something. It seems literally impossible to preserve the Helix, I agree. So we just gotta ask ourselves, how reliant on apparitions are we? Very reliant. And what are we missing? A draw putt. Um, but with all that being said, I don't think we're going to preserve Helix. Okay, we got all the things. We got the armaments and the apotheosis, which means it's probably time for power pot into using all our potions, which means we're going to keep the vulnerable. However... We're gonna have a lot of powers. Unless we don't, maybe, maybe we can. Maybe only use one. Maybe we only use speed pot for the. Okay, so maybe we only use speed pot. The flex pot we could do on the second panacea. It doesn't have to be in the first. And this gives me the, the dexterity to play all the cards now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This gives me Evolve, which says, hey, those statuses that you were scared of, no longer you have to worry about them. Or, Fire Breathing for some damage. And that says, Fire Breathing is doing 20 damage per status. Were you worried about damage? I mean, I wasn't necessarily worried about damage. I have Flex Spot now, and I have Rupture in the deck. So I'm more worried about the draw. In fact, that's too much trouble, whatever. But now we have this. We play all the powers. We can end with double tap uppercut as well. So now he's weak and invulnerable for the rest of his life. got the shuriken proc as well so now we keep that 10 dexterity stop the vulnerable amazing first turn 
and hope that we draw Apparition. Well, we draw the Apparition, but if we didn't, could have taken it and got Reaper back. And now the goal is to draw into Funeral Pain, Rupture, or Berserk. One of the two. This gives us some block for next turn. Or just draw all the apparitions, sir. I guess that works. We'll keep one of them around for the future. I'll do one of them now so I don't have to worry about blocking next turn. But then I asked you, am I worried about next turn? I have Weaken. I don't have Vulnerable. Can't I block next turn with blocks? And I can use this as a shuriken turn. You know what I mean? Why waste an apparition for next turn? When next turn is probably pretty doable. Isn't it only like 1 times 15? That's that's nothing. 1 times 15 is a flesh wound. In fact, it's going to be blocked by the suffering clay by itself. And this gives us a chance to get a shuriken proc. So we get a shuriken proc. This is already blocked. And now we can Panacea for the Flex Pot and Panacea for the Flex. Woo! Let's go! Now the order here is important. Because it's all one thing. And now we Panacea. Should've done that first, my bad. Our right, dagger, we're not gonna nourish the dagger, it's fine. Who wants to nourish the dagger? Not me. And now we can bring back a couple of things. You can bring back the sword boomerang, which would be my damage output, or you can bring back the uppercut so that he's weak and invulnerable for the next cycle. And I think weak and vulnerable for the next cycle is pretty important. Because I must mention that my blocks next turn are really bad. Like my apparitions are at the bottom of my deck. Wait, I'm not out of the woods. Because I have to go through a whole new cycle and my my butt my decks. Wait a minute. I think I have to bring back Battle Trance. No, these, these draw four cards. So each status draws four cards. Keep that in mind. And if I bring back Uppercut, at least we know they're weakened for the, the important turns, which gives me some, some insurance. And we have 10 Dexterity. Okay. So I'll bring back the Uppercut. I'm just saying, I wonder if it's Battle Trance so I don't whiff as much. We do have a lot of dexterity, and as long as they're weakened, I'm happy, so let's do that. I have a lot of dexterity. Sorry, a lot of strength. Perfect. What a turn. What a fucking turn. Got rid of the void perfectly. Let's play all the cards. I don't want it to hit this arm. It's it's, it's gorgeous. It, it makes me... It's just, it's just beautiful. Perfect shuriken proc. Perfect damage utilization. I don't want to war cry because if I war cry, I'm drawing way too many cards. And now we need to do damage, damage, damage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I could apparition. Why not? I don't, why why that person when I can just block? Huh. I mean the reason why you don't disarm guys because negative strength turns into positive strength. That person lets you farm clay procs. Does it? But does it really? Because we have way too much. We're exhausting too many cards. We're not taking any. We're not taking any damage. GG! How do you want to kill it, sir? I want to headbutt it to death.
Okay, this one's like a 3,176. No, no it's not, no it's not. This one was like a 3,000, zero, 3,058. 3,058. Damn, 2,936. All right, boys, this run was scary. I did not expect this run to go there. Uh, why can't I look at the deck anymore? I want to look at my deck. Can we look at our deck? All right, let's go back to this screen real quick. I mean, apparitions are just good. Apparitions are just good. But I took a flex to get scaling, all right? I got the rupture anyways, but let's take a look. It was the hands, it was the egg, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We had a lot of good a lot of good relics. We had the bark, the bark belt. This was really important. Bronze goes was really important for damage in Act 2. The clay, the helix, the helix was kind of a non factor. The meat plus the flour. It was the meaty flour for me. For me it was the meaty flour. That's what did it get down to nitty gritty okay so it was the combination of the apparitions with the meat that really made this run health pool was uh i could take up to 20 20 26 30 damage a fight kill it all back up no problem and then i could also just focus on damage for apparitions what brought it together at the end i would say was being able to hold on to the potions so the speed pot with the bark and the flex pot with the bark with the power pot really made the, the heart trivial.